Hey, it's Thursday, and you're tuned in to the Lockdown Lookup. We are having a look at the armor of God from Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 23. And after a few days of some um, introductory comments, we are finally going to start with the actual list of the pieces of the armor of God. And so today we kick off with the first in that list, and that is the belt of truth. Now, as I understand it, um, in those days, when it came to armor, that kind of soldiers would wear is that the belt was an essential item of equipment so not just an accessory uh, kind of like today uh, not like some kind of utility belt either but really an essential part of the armor whereby the belt was what enabled the breastplate to be held up in place so you couldn't wear that breastplate uh, which we'll get into in a few days you, you wouldn't be able to wear that if it wasn't for the belt that kind of held everything together uh, so the belt of truth, I think it kind of makes sense that this essential piece of armor is related to the idea of truth when it comes to spiritual warfare. And, and that's just because, you know, when you read the Bible and read some of the descriptions um, given of the devil. So John 8, Jesus describes the devil as the father of lies. Therefore, lies... Falsehood is going to be one of the devil's greatest weapons. And so to combat that, Christians have to be people of truth. To Christians, truth matters. And I want to say that that just makes sense in a whole bunch of ways, but especially in today's age. So I want to take a little bit of time to talk about this, kind of one of my hobby horses. So today's... Uh, Lockdown Look Up Devo may be a little bit longer, but um, bear me out here. Today, more than ever, it is so necessary for Christians to realize that truth matters, right? For, for two reasons, right? One is that our pursuit of truth has changed these days. So, for example, if, you're, if you want to find out something, the answer to a question, uh, where are you going to go? So you're going to go to Google, for sure, right? Google something. Uh, and maybe if it's a little bit of a deeper issue, then you'll go to Wikipedia, right? So those are two places where we would go to find answers. I just want to say nothing particularly wrong with those places, but in using them uh, as our pursuit for answers or truth, it's important to realize uh, that we are being shaped in our pursuit of truth using these mechanisms, right? So here's what I mean by that. So when you Google something, uh, it's not giving you necessarily answers to your question. It is giving you pages that are relevant to you and what you're asking. In other words, Google works on the principle of relevance. So based on your previous search history, your profile, it's going to have to narrow down the entire World Wide Web and give you what's relevant for you. So that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the truth. It's going to be what's relevant for you. So I tested this out one day. Can't believe what I discovered. Right. So I just typed into Google Islam just as a test. So a completely different religion. I typed in Islam and of the first 10 page hits reported by Google, Seven of them were Christian websites commenting on Islam. You see, what, see what's happening there? Google obviously knows. Obviously, Google Christian-related stuff all the time. So it knows I'm a Christian. And so it's giving me uh, answers based on what's relevant to me. It's not giving me an objective position on the subject of Islam. It's giving me what's relevant to me. So i uh, Pursuit of truth is being shaped, and when it comes to Google, it's the principle of rele relevance, and they have to do that. And when it comes to Wikipedia, the principle is a little different. It's the principle of consensus, right? So that's this kind of online encyclopedia, and articles are shaped by more and more and more people adding and contributing to it. And the idea is that if you know hundreds of thousands of people say this is true, well, then that must be true. And if you think about this from a Christian perspective, um, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it's the power of God. You think about this 
most profound, life-altering, eternity-shaping message is a message that cannot be found by consensus nor by relevance. Right? And, and again, I'm not saying that, that, that like the devil is in these mechanisms. What I'm saying is that these days, in the information age, we as Christians more than ever need to be aware of truth and our pursuit for truth. That just speaks simply into like, don't believe everything you read online. And really just having this mindset of pursuing going beyond what's on the surface because although we have a ton of information, what's coming at us is not even close to necessarily uh, representing truth. So that's the one way we need to be aware in the information age, is our pursuits of truth is being shaped. And we need to be aware of that. The second thing we need to be aware of when it comes to truth in the information age is the abundance of falsehood. Oh my goodness. Hobby horse. Rant time. It's a fake news. Never before have we experienced anything like this. With all the information that's out there and just how much of it is false and what gets shared most readily and consumed most hungrily is fake news. So I came across some research uh, recently, a study by MIT that did a study on all the articles posted on Twitter since its inception in the English, English language, right? So that's um, basically they analyzed every major contested news story in Twitter's existence. So that's something like 126,000 stories that were posted on Twitter that were tweeted by over 3 million people and they analyzed those stories and they wanted to see if fake news or real news between the two, which had the greater impact or which traveled the fastest? What do you think? Well, of course, you know the answer. Fake news, but let me give you this, the stats. What they found is that a false story is far more likely to go viral than a real story. And he has, he has the numbers. So a false story reaches the threshold of 1,500 people so for, uh, it gets to 1,500 people, a false story, six times faster than a true story. Uh, and 70%, uh, fake news is 70% more likely to get retweeted than accurate news. Just think about that for a second. Fake news, 70% more likely to be retweeted, more, six six times faster going viral, fake news, than truth. So this tells you people love fake news. Oh wow, I mean that's just because of the, the novelty, the intrigue. It's kind of the same device behind gossip, right? For Christians, truth matters. And I want to say especially our credibility in this information age as Christians is under scrutiny. I mean, if we are people who are falling for all of this fake false stuff, other people looking in on Christianity see that and here's what happens. They say, oh, look at those Christians. They're falling for this nonsense. Well, that explains why they're falling for the story of Jesus. Just how devastating is it to our credibility when it comes to believing, yes, the unlikely story of Jesus, when we are just so prone to believing all the nonsense out of there. Let me say it again. For Christians, truth matters more so now in the kingdom of God, in the attacks of the enemy who is the father of lies, in the credibility of the gospel, and just basically in painting a picture of God. I mean, for Christians, truth matters. God himself is a God of truth. John 17, verse 3. This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God. God is truth. Jesus declared himself, remember this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
And even the Holy Spirit, so if you're tracking here, Father, Son, even the Holy Spirit is known as John 16 verse 13, the Spirit of Truth. Truth is not an attribute of God. Truth is God. It's at the very heart of the divine nature of God is truth. For Christians, truth matters. And so we've got to be diligent in pursuing truth, especially when that pursuit is being shaped in ways we don't realize, especially in an abundance of falsehood, and especially when the enemy is the father of lies. Let's be people of truth. Amen. See you all tomorrow.